Hey guys, it's uh, Wednesday. I am. Um, that means it is tea with Tamara time. Um, to this this particular tea with Tamara, I'm really excited about a couple of things. Um, you'll see my mug. Oh, you're your author. Yeah, this is a celebratory tea with Tamara, and it's from the author incubator. Uh, so I'm actually using the mug that I got from the program from when I wrote my book and I'm going all like serious with roasted dandelion root because apparently this stuff, uh, dandelions are not just weeds, they're delicious. So really exciting first and foremost, I just really have to get it out because I'm birth, a burst with the birth of my book. Um, so I wrote, I sent it in my final draft first draft manuscript at nine o'clock night I completed as much as I could got it out there and, and now it's out in the world and it will be soon out in the ah, little hearts I love hearts um the book and the reason the book is so important is um my child is my kid is driving me crazy a mom's survival guide to living with a child with mental illness and the reason this book had to come When I decided, when I decided that it was time for me to write this book and join this program, I can't handle these hearts. I love them so much. I knew that I wanted to write a book. When in my program, I had to come on a reader, like somebody who's going to read my book and submit it over again. And finally, when it's the one. So talking about resistance and, and writing this book, first and foremost, when I went to sign the application, um, literally I had a massive panic attack while filling it out, teeth chattering, blankets on, thought I was going to absolutely die. I had to take breaks. I had to sit on my hands. I was sitting in a chair to fill out the application. And two things could have happened there, you guys. When the resistance came, when I was filling out the application, I could have went, oh my God, I can't believe I'm having a panic attack, left my computer. And never went back to it or something else happened which was what it was anytime we feel resistance to that level it's my resistance is there to tell us that something amazing is gonna happen and I don't mean like the type where you're walking down the street and you see someone creepy across the street and you're like oh uh, that gives me a no feeling that's a different kind of resistance <laughs> and you're like I don't want to talk to them I don't want to like have anything to do with them but a resistance where you know you're making yourself uncomfortable when you know you're gonna do something that stretches you outside of what you would normally do that's a freaking amazing resistance so my first resistance came with this book when I went to even apply to be in it it's crazy the second resistance came when I was trying to figure out who I was going to write a book for and why. And I came up with all of these and I'll never forget the first ideal reader I sent to. She sent me back a, so you're writing a uh, dating book for single mothers. And I was like, what the fuck? No, that's not what I wanted to do. And I tried so hard to fight what I knew I had to do. I grew up in a house with with depression and so when I was 17 I moved out because I wanted to run away from it it was hard and I got overwhelmed and I was codependent with my mother and so I left at 17 and when I was 18 I moved out like away from my sister away from my family everything and then I got pregnant at 19 um, because I think I was seeking this love that I wanted something that was so warm and amazing for me and it wasn't that long after I had Ethan that I learned that he also suffered from at the time of eight years old he was diagnosed with ADHD um, that would be the first diagnosis of many that we went through um, and I was angry when he got diagnosed. I was so mad. <laughs> I was like, you talked to my son for 20 minutes. How dare you tell me there's something wrong with him? After What did you do? How did you test him? Right? And I was in serious denial because I'd run away from it for so long. I didn't really want it up in my personal love 
So I actually chose not to medicate Ethan at eight years old because I thought if I just like smothered him with love, that it would work way better, right? Um, so when I was in the shower one day and I'd sent in four book that potentially uh, ideal readers, four different different styles of book, and I was in the shower and uh, all of a sudden I heard my angels and if you know me, you know that I've recently started to communicate with them and they were like, Tamara, what are you doing? You know you need to write this book. And I was like, no, I don't want to write this book. This book is about mental illness. I've just tried so hard to forget about all the mental illness. You know, I've worked two years since Ethan and I had broken up to really get to a good place. I don't want to write this book. And they're like, but Tamara, <laughs> you need to write this book. This is the book that's going to matter. And it's going to make me a little bit emotional because... When I was going through everything with Ethan and I was at the peak of all of the hardness, there was nobody there to tell me how hard it would be. There was nobody there that said, having a child with mental illness will be the hardest thing you ever do, but you're going to be okay. And at the end of it, you and Ethan are going to love each other more than you even thought was possible. I didn't plan on crying when I started this video today. <laughs> so I knew at that moment that was really important that a book had to be made that would help support and be there for, for women. Thank you for the hearts, guys. <laughs> and for mothers, because I was a single mother at the time. And to be there for people who are in that space and not one where it felt like it was a review on mental illness or how, you know, but a real, a real document, like a real book that tells you how you have it and that you might not always like your kid. You love them forever. Thanks, Georgina. You love them so much, right? But that it's okay. It's totally okay. You don't like them sometimes. Now, it was a journey, and this book has got so much information in it. But the idea here is that at the end of it all, I learned what I needed to do in order to free Ethan and I into a loving relationship. Like, it's incredible where we are right now. I never imagined that we could get there, and we did. Now, just did my first draft manuscript. I want to get this book out really badly, you guys. So if, if any of you know somebody who's in a position like I was in, please have them like my, like my Facebook. Have them private message me. I will be looking for advanced readers, people who are, are open to reading the book prior and, and writing a review. So I would like to start collecting names for that. But I want to get back to resistance again uh, because resistance is a real douchebag sometimes and um, it can cause a lot of fear um, and a lot of stopping you from doing the things that you're actually meant to be doing that you were put on this earth to do for your gifts for your your life purpose you know in Stephen Pressfield's The War of Art book and I went looking for it I, I often lend out my books and they don't come back because it's fine. Um, Stephen Pressfield's War of Art, it's a, an entire book dedicated on, on bringing up how resistance manifests in your life and how, you know, even at the end of this book, so I'm writing a book about mental illness and my son, of course his, his apartment gets broken into. <laughs> of course he moves home for three weeks while I'm writing this book near the end of my book writing. Of course, everything, all the strategies I put in this book had to play out in the exact time that I was writing it because it wouldn't have happened any other way, right? I had to go through that resistance in order for this book to be as realistic and real as I could make it. As well as like in the Becoming Me program, I have somebody right now, and I'm not going to say her name, 
but she's in the process of becoming her next phase of herself and the resistance that the world is throwing at her is insane. It, you have choices, right? So, you know, some people, this particular person, she had her mom hospitalized twice. She heard really sad news about her, her nieces. She found out about her mom's mental health in a completely different way. Her brother's car broke down and had to. She had a 24 hour blackout. She's been sick for three weeks and all this manifests because we have such a hard, hard time saying, what if we just step across this line onto the other side? What if I don't put all this fear of failure and success and what, what ifs and what's gonna happen on me anymore and I just go like, I've done it. Imagine yourself on the other side. And when you're there and you don't kick up onto all that resistance, everything is easier. One of my favorite sayings is everything is difficult until it is easy. And the reason it's difficult is because we make it difficult. Because we're awesome like that. Like, why would we make things easy? Why? <laughs> but it can be. It truly can be. Um, key here is resistance supposed to be uncomfortable. Please note that. Please remember that. So the next time you're going to do something where you're like, I'm going to take this class or I'm going to do this. So like for me personally, even like I'm going to get on a plane by myself and fly without anybody I know tomorrow. That, that kicks up some resistance. I don't really want to do that. I'm scared. Um, but that resistance that I'm feeling, that nervousness or maybe potentially panic attack tomorrow morning when I wake up to go to the airport, I know that it's there to help me, to guide me into becoming the next phase of Tamara. I just spent the last three months becoming the Tamara who wrote a book. And I can tell you that when I, you know that, the, the panic attack I had there, I went through like weeks of anxiety. And I was talking to you guys about it on Facebook because I knew that I had to no longer be small Tamara who was afraid. I needed to be the Tamara that could step into the shoes to write a book that was gonna help people all over the world. And that shit's scary, right? So the Tamara before she wrote a book was like, no, don't be that Tamara, let's stay small, let's stay hidden, let's not do this. And I didn't want to, I didn't listen. So I pushed through all that in order to become the Tamara that wrote the book. But now I need to become the Tamara that gets the book out to whoever needs it. And that's going to be another phasing up and another growth, right? So I know that tomorrow when I get on that plane to go to my marketing and editing and publishing weekend to learn all of that, that's another phasing up. So I, I'll, I'll kind of be honest with you guys and share a little story about me on a Tuesday. Uh, that Tamara, the Tamara who wrote the book, but is is afraid of becoming the Tamara that like does all the other work when she gets off the plane coming home. She didn't want to do anything. She was afraid that she wouldn't be able to just have days in her pajamas anymore. Um, because if you know this book does really well, which I hope it does, because it's really meant to help so many people. Um, I didn't. I, I stayed in my pajamas and I watched eight hours of Netflix. I don't normally watch TV and I like, and I sent my 11 year old to, to the store to buy me chips and I ate those chips for dinner, right? I agree so much. I believe when we are moving on higher vibration to be a true to us self, old vibrations come up to the surface. Beautiful, well said. I truly agree with that as well. Um, so yeah, Tuesday, the, the Tamara who wrote the book was afraid of the Tamara who actually gets the book out into the world and she hibernated and she ate chips for dinner. That's what happens, resistance. But I, I honored that, right? You have to honor it when you feel it as well. So I knew it was like silly that I wouldn't be able to have a PJ day later in life. But that Tamara was petrified on Tuesday of stepping into the next role in my business and my life. And so she wanted to stay small and hide on her couch and snuggle with her daughter and eat chips for dinner. So I gave her that. And I said, you get this for today. But tomorrow we step up, we finish our manuscript and we go away to DC on, fr on Thursday and you're in. And I said, deal, <laughs> deal. You let me watch five episodes of Gilmore Girls and three of the OA and eat chips for dinner and I will gladly become that next Tamara. Any thoughts, feelings, and questions you guys have, please place them here. I just want you to know that everyone is amazing. We are all here with special gifts that the world is meant to see and to have. And don't be afraid of being uncomfortable. Don't be afraid of that resistance. Let it kick up. Let it show its face and, and honestly know and honor it and say, it's okay. It's okay that you're here. Call it up. 
I always say bring it in the car for a ride because you're always going to feel fear. You're always going to have resistance. It's, that's never changes. It's just our psychology, right? So invite it out. Say, I'm going on this trip. Come in the car. Like, come on the plane with me. Sit beside me on the plane, right? You can choose to talk to me about whatever, but I'm going to be looking out my window reading my book, but I'm glad you're here because resistance, you've actually taught me a lot. You've taught me to make the right decisions now in my life. So I appreciate and honor that you're here. If you're going on a road trip, let him come on the road trip, but don't let him touch the radio. Do you know what I mean? Like just honor that feeling and those thoughts. Again, if you want um, any information about my book, please send me a private message. I'm going to start collecting emails um, so that I can send out when the book is going to be ready for advanced reading and also for when it is actually going to be, uh, it will probably go out for free on Amazon when I first launch it. Um, so I would love to share this. And if you know anybody else who, who is suffering a little bit in silence and I don't want to cry again because I get, it's just, I, I just finished my book yesterday. I'm a little mess. Um, but I would love to help anyone who feels that they are doing the parenting alone. And even if you're in a relationship, sometimes it can be the loneliest thing in the land when you're advocating with your, for your child and no one else knows and no one else understands what that feels like. So please message me because I love you and I want to help. So other than that, you know that Tea with Tamara is here for you guys. Um, ask me any questions in the comments or send me messages at Tamara at the enchanted fairy .ca, or just send me a message in my private message here on Facebook. And I will again, Tamarize anything, um, that I would like to help you with. So I hope you guys all have a magical day next time. Next week you will see me. I will have like my other face on. I'm just kidding. I'll look the same, but I'll be ready to phase into you. The Tamara who gets her book out into the world. All right. So. Love you all. Have a great day.